Okay, a couple of things from the last video was about making selections, making them clean. I mentioned quickly adding to a selection. For example, in this image here, the ERE is not selected. You can tell that because it, the marching ants, the selection, uh, doesn't include the R of that text. So to add to a selection, I want to make sure you're in the right tool or in a good appropriate tool. To add to a selection, you hold the shift key down and you just click and drag and boom, there it is. Now, just in case you're, oops, you're curious, if you want to subtract from a selection, for example, this little element here of the mountain, you know, we don't want that selected. To subtract from a selection, you again choose the right tool, and the lasso would be good for this. You hold down the Option key. When you look at the actual icon here, the mouse, when I hold down the Option key, it has a little minus. So that's telling me I'm going to subtract from this greater selection of the sky. So I'm going to actually turn off the mouse highlight, and I'll hold down the Option key, and I'm just going to trace this area kind of quickly. I'm not worrying about being perfect right now. And now I've subtracted that part from the selection. Um, now, the other big helpful thing is that, well, you might recall that I started this by saying we wanted to adjust the tone of the mountains. And instead, we selected the sky. So why is that? Well, the sky was easier to select. But now with the sky selected, I can come on up here to select and I can inverse my selection. By inversing it, boom, now everything below the sky is selected. Uh, it includes the snow field, but the snow field I can delete pretty easily. Um, inverse selection is a really handy tool to, uh, well, let's just say when you have a difficult selection, you want to choose the thing that's easiest to select. And in this case, for me, it was the sky, but I can inverse that selection to flip it around and actually get what I want selected, which is in this case, the mountains. Now to subtract everything else from that, I'm going to hold down my option key. And I've got my lasso, and I'm just going to make a quick selection here. I'm not worrying about being perfect because this is an example. And now you can see that pretty much everything else is not selected. So within just a few mouse clicks, I have the mountain selected and not the other bits. Um, okay, so here's the other thing. It takes a lot of work. Making good selections takes time. And they're so easily lost, like someone walking by bumps your elbow and boom, it's all gone because you clicked the wrong way. So what you want to do is save your selection. So underneath the word select up in your top menu, so you come down to save selection. And by choosing save selection, we'll get this little dialog and it's going to identify the document, the channel, and I mean, you could do this for, well, it'll be a new channel. And we'll call this, oh, sky. All right, now I'll click OK. And now I've got that selection saved. Now if I go on and do other things, like we will later in this tutorial, like, oh, moving things and making duplicates and stuff like that, you know, not, not a big whoop. Let's just say I need to go back to my sky selection. Now I can go on up to select, load that selection, choose it from the select load selection, get this window, I choose the channel sky, I click OK, and there it is. So from a working efficiency standpoint, saving your selection, it's kind of like saving curves and levels, same process. It's saving your actions so that you can do them another time. As with many of the things in this class and well, in life, we do things many times over and over and over again. So the things that you don't need to struggle with, don't. If you're going to use them once, save it and you'll have it for future uses. It's a piece of cake. Now, here's a little weird detour for you. Have I ever sh shown you this? This is going to be my next tattoo. This has deep, deep meaning. I'll give five bonus points to the first student who tells me what that deep meaning is. Ha! Okay, there's your challenge. We'll see you in the next video.